Once again, you already know what it is, and you already know where you have reached the number one collaborative professional wrestling podcast in the world today. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the building for episode 82, and I want to say 82 consecutive weeks of Clash of the Podcast. Two guys, two fathers, two people who have significant others, two guys that have jobs, two guys that have fought being, you know, having the flu here and there or whatever the case may have been. We've been here for 80 times where I was in Miami for Christmas and yet still 82 consecutive weeks. And it's a blessing. We thank God. We thank you guys for being here, man. Once again, we are in the building. The one and only Conrad Cushman representing everything pro wrestling. My name is Sean. I represent Hubbard Wrestling Weekly on the humble, on the smooth, on the humble, on the smooth. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. We're in the building, but we're blessed and we're happy to be here. We got a lot of things to talk about. We're going to go down WrestleMania memory lane again. We're going to talk about Jade Cargill and what her role is going to be as she makes her SmackDown debut next week. Obviously, we're going to talk a little bit about the bloodline. and We're going to talk about a very successful week in the land of all elite wrestling. That and so much more. Coming up on episode 82 of Clash of the By God podcast. Conrad, my brother from another mother, drop that thing. It is 82 weeks. Unbelievable. Welcome, everybody, to Clash of the Podcast. Hope everyone is doing well on this beautiful Monday. It's it's sunny here. I don't know if it's like that in New it's York. Sean. very sunny here as well. Very. It's been very pleasant. A little chilly, but, but very sunny. I'll take it, right? No yep. snow? I'll take it. So listen, everybody, if we haven't mentioned this, we do have a giveaway for this show. If you're interested... Let us know. Uh, I'll let Sean come up with a hashtag while I say this. We have a Wrestling Revolver show for uh, Grit Your Teeth. We have some familiar names possibly on the card. Maybe we have some grizzled young veterans. We got some <laughs> rascals on here. Uh, we got some impact talent. Uh, Myron Reed, Mance Warner, Alex Shelley. And Killer Kelly, and I believe the main event of the show is going to be the current X Division champion, Mustafa Ali. And can we call him the homie Rich Swan? Yeah, you already know. <laughs> uh, I love I love that that's the new gimmick for him. So we're going to be giving that away on Triller TV. So make sure that you guys are plugged in. Stay all the way until the end if you want an opportunity to win this show. Uh, Sean, what do, you, what do we want to have them put in the chat, maybe? We're going to keep it real simple. All you got to do is do hashtag EPW Hub. EPW Hub. EPW Hub, if you want to be considered for it. Um, we're going to go through everybody. We're going to give our what's ups real quick. I don't know if we'll... Uh... Yeah, we got time. We got time. Let's do this. Do this how yes, we always sir. do it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. First one in here. The only Vinny I like. Only Vinny we like. There you go. Because, there you go. Yes, sir. It ain't, it ain't happening no more with him. Yes, sir. Uh, happy Monday. God bless y'all. What's up, Vinny? Sir Quills also in the house. What's up, Conrad Sean Chat? Your boy Sir Quills is back again to enjoy my two favorite bros, CJ and Hubs, for episode 82, the Don Beebe edition of the Dope Podcast in the game, Clash of the By God. Of the I By God. God podcast. Quilly in the building. Right? Uh-oh. Somebody just jumped up. They were making sure. Joel, happy Monday, guys. WrestleMania is almost here. And you know what? We're going to have a lot of fun on this show. We're going to have a lot of fun also on April 4th. Thursday, April 4th is going to be a massively fun show. And I have a new guest that I'd like to introduce 
It is the one and only Mr. Joel representing Triller TV is going to be in the building. Triller TV's, I guess you could say, social media guru, Joel, is going to be in the building for Hubbard Wrestling Weekly on Thursday, April 4th, along with the one and only Conrad Cushman, along with the one and only Miss Crystal, along with Pro Wrestling Shoots, one and only Jesse, and a surprise guest. So Thursday, April 4th, 8.35 p.m., make sure you mark your calendars. Keep them marked. Guy Will Gamble in the house. He said, yep. What up, everybody? Hope you're having a great day. Ready for the best tag team in the biz. I appreciate that, guys. Appreciate you, bro. Uh, Mike from The Rock, he says, once again, it's time for everybody to get on the question mark train. Get on the pro train? <laughs> Just want every, to give everyone a shout out. Uh, brutal Honest Podcast by the most brutal honest podcast ever in the building. Couldn't have it any other way. We try to always keep it a stack, Mike. We appreciate you. Sean was showing y'all some love while we were talking in a uh, pre-show here. XG Dub in the house was good. What's good? XG Dub, super loyal. Appreciate you, man. BJ says, I'm bummed that I won't be able uh, to be in for the full live stream tonight, but I hope everyone is doing well. I uh, hope your excitement for Mania is continuing to build. Also, know that if you're traversing through life aligned your trust, or excuse me, your truest self and doing minimal harm, then you're doing it right and keeping your head held high with knowing that. Mm. And I want to say to BJ, man, you, you whether you stick around or you don't, we appreciate you as well, man. You, you challenge us, you, uh, you have fun, and you show a lot of respect. So I want to say thank you for you and, and everything you've done. <clears throat> Love BJ. BJ's always good, man. Uh, Renegade L2K, James from the Pro Wrestler Shoe says, what's up, fellas? Thoughts on the hip drop tackle ban? I have not seen this yet today, but mm. I am. Was just talking about James, man. Wish James could have been on the show on April 4th, but we're going to get him on to Hubbard Wrestling Weekly very, very soon. Uh, appreciate you, James. You and Jesse are top tier, bro. Clown in the house. He said, afternoon, everybody. What's good, Clown? Cleasy. <laughs> Doug, Monday, 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 time for another clash. What up, Dougie? Dougie? Teach me, teach me how to Dougie. Hey. Dougie Fresh. Gotta yes, love sir. it. Yo, shout out to my guy Ray Thompson. Ray shared some exciting news with me. Yes, yes. Uh, definitely dope. Happy Monday, guys. Hope everyone had a great weekend. I hope you have a better week, my friend. Uh, good things are happening, Ray. I appreciate you always tuning in and checking Not- us out. Not going to tell Ray's business, but I will say on the air, praying for you and believing good things are to come. Ray, we appreciate you. McKinney in the house. Yo, I'm here to talk. Wrestle with the Fire Live chat and the brothers of Dudleyville, Clash of the Podcast. And to let y'all know, let the past die. It's the only way to become what you're meant to be. McKinney. Always nuggets of wisdom. We appreciate you not only here but on social media as well. Yo, shout out to McKinney. He's been uh, keeping the uh, Everything Pro Wrestler Facebook group up to date, putting in matches, promos, countdowns, whatever he could find. So I appreciate that, McKinney. Might have to make you a, a mod over there soon. You doing a lot. I'm gonna ask the chat. Do y'all think I should do like a Hubbard Wrestling Weekly Facebook page? Let me know what y'all think. I'm only, I'm only going to do it if the chat Yes, because I, I need to be able to tag you. <laughs> oh, oh, I don't have an opinion, man. No, you have an opinion. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. You have an opinion, but don't get it. Don't act like you take all my suggestions, bro. <laughs> I know, but every time I go to tag you other, I'm like, well, I don't want to tag the brother's personal page on right here. No, so I'm like, you. hey, come on. <laughs> I feel you. Uh, let me see here. Terrell says, I'm sorry. I'm like, never be sorry. Hubbard, are you going to Raw for Barclays? I will be in attendance. It'll be my first time seeing The Rock in person. I will not be in attendance only because, and I have I got tickets, but I only, well, I'm about to be working and I have some family stuff, so I will not be in attendance. But I'm looking forward to uh, you having a good time and telling me all about it. And by the way, T3Z just came up with that. There we go. Entertained 45 says, what up, everybody? Okada really overshadowed the Edge victory. Glad they are both champs. We're going to be talking about that, Entertained. That's what's up. That's what's up. Definitely going to be talking about that. M. Leezy Fo Sheezy. Hello, everyone. Good evening. I think I got the voice now. Now, 
Good evening. Mm-hmm. Hope everyone is having a good day, and let's kick the week off with the two best in our wrestling co- Oh, man. God bless you, Emily. We appreciate you, dog. Word, word. I appreciate that. Air Gold talking smack on the Drew Punk Mindy Bakery stuff. Yo, can I go off for 30 seconds about this? Yes. CM Punk is gone from AEW. Stop <laughs> talking about him. He <laughs> left. It's <laughs> almost been a year, people. Let it's it not go. almost been a year. It's not almost been a year. Yes, it has. In five months, it's almost been a year. Let oh, it man. go. I agree. He's gone. He's gone. Yes. He's gone. Jungle Boy, why am I hearing about CM Punk still? Why? Don't be mad that you got yoked up and then he got fired. He's gone. And then you still haven't been back. What did you really accomplish? Real class. Real class. Real job. Yeah, good job. <laughs> Stupid. Conrad. Conrad with the energy this afternoon. Done, bro. I've been done with it. Done with the foolishness. See, oh, yeah, real big is someone who got his own show on Saturdays. You gave me a show to set me up to fail. Get out of here with this hot garbage. <laughs> Shut up. I'm done talking about this CM Punk stuff. I've been mad. I've been quiet for a long time now. Let him cook tonight. I swear. I'm done. Oh, he's going to cook, but I have a feeling Drew's going to cook too. Oh, yeah. Oh, Drew thinks he's Mr. Funny Guy right now. It's fun now. Wait till you're on the mic with him. If they say Punk gloves off, watch yourself, Drew. Real quick, real quick. My guy, Derek. Appreciate you, brother. I see you. Nothing but love, my G. I'll put him up right now <laughs> out of respect. Uh, let me see your pro wrestler shoe said, yo, what's good? What's good? Jesse. Make sure you guys check out the pro wrestler shoot. I'm going to put their uh, link in the chat. Just like on Tuesdays. Show. I've been watching too, getting a lot of 2K24 education. Yes. Lots of uh, car talk on there. Anything about WWE 2K24, pro wrestling shoots got you covered. Yo, real, real quick about pro wrestling shoot, man. Big shout out to Conrad for making the introduction. Those two guys are so freaking humble. Like, they are rock stars in this community, and they talk, and they have shown so much love. Everybody, look, 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 this is my show, and I'm going to take, it's my show because I'm in my feelings right now in a very good way. Everybody knows how I feel about the bro, Conrad. He put me on. There's no reason to deny it. It is what it is. Conrad put me on. God bless you, bro. And he introduced me to some amazing people. And Jesse and James of TWS, God bless you guys as well. I salute y'all, man. It's nothing but good vibes. Do y'all feel my energy? To- Listen, I wasn't in the greatest mood two weeks ago, and I'm feeling great. And let me tell you something. Good vibes like this, it's a blessing. It's truly a blessing. So happy to be with you guys. Right. I appreciate the Dwayne Conrad Cushman Johnson. Knock it off, though. Uh, McKinney says, hit that like button. I'm just trying to make sure we got everybody. The epitome of consistency, sir. Quill said, Conrad Cushman and Sean Hubbard. We try, Quilly. We try. That's how you do it. Yo, Donnie says, shout out to Clash of the Podcast. Donnie, I appreciate you, bro. I know you always listen either on the, the later tip or uh, whatever else. Thank you, brother. Don things are good. Don Teasy. Don Teasy. Uh, Doug said, you guys going to do a WCW special next week? Not now, but I wouldn't mind doing some WCW stuff for you guys. Yo, Doug is laughing, but I'm not mad at WCW's history at all. No, it gave me some good times, bro. When I was a little kid, Saturday nights, that was, that was a good time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Clash of the Champions reign on top is much taller than Leprechauns. (laughs) I appreciate it. That's funny. Rich homie Swan. That's what uh that's what they were calling him. I'm telling you. Y'all think I'm joking. Uh um, guy will gamble the homies are putting in. I appreciate you guys, man. Make sure you check out hubs. I'm just trying to see if we've missed anybody or anything. We get we're getting thanks for the love. Positivity always better than evil. Always, bro. yes, yes, yes. Always. Yes. I know sometimes I you gotta let them know. Rob in the house was good, Rob. I see you. Year. What up, Rob? You. <laughs> Matt Lopez says, Jungle Boy is in the house of torture, the group can, that can single-handedly make New Japan Cup unwatchable for the most part. No lies, Emily Z. 100. Jocelyn said, be in your feelings. <laughs> Yo, I'm, I you know it. what? Real men, real men can do that and still be Gs. You know what I'm saying, Jocelyn? You're a female. You let me know. Real men can do that and still be Gs. Always, bro. Always. Uh... <laughs> 
Any plans on Easter food, uh, Clash Easter basket? Uh, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mom, Mom Dukes Church. for me. She, yeah. she told me we got ham. We got ham on the way, bro. That's all I needed to hear. I'm in. That's what's up. I'm a church dude, so church is pretty norm for me. So church is nothing, nothing out of the norm. But church, mom's house, and mom is cooking. So I'm fired up about that. Let's see. See, and we're getting love too. WCW special. I love yeah, that. Yeah, man. Yeah. Here he goes. I knew he, WCW 2000. Ah, maybe I'll be willing to do some research. I'll be willing to do some research. That laugh was because next week's episode is 83 in reference to 83 weeks. Oh. I didn't even realize it. That's Eric how long Bischoff. Eric Bischoff's run on top was. Remember that, folks. Yeah, 83. That's pretty cool, though. I'm not going to. 83 weeks. That's dope. Yeah. Uh, Vinny says, love y'all. Love you too, Vinny. Right back to you, man. Love you too. Uh, laugh now, cry later. Funny enough, I've been watching WCW shows currently in 98, Road to Super Brawl. Bro, I did that a couple months back, man. I was watching 99 WCW. M. Leezy and chat, before we get to my guy Vinny, M. Leezy and chat, did you guys take my recommendation about Super Brawl 98, Disco Inverno versus La Parca? Did you see the chart buster? Did you see the crowd go crazy? The chart buster. <laughs> I'm telling you, Super. I talked about this on a previous show. Super Brawl 98, Hogan, Sting 2, undercard was Disco versus La Parca. And I'm telling you, bruh, the chart buster, the crowd in San Francisco went nuts. Knocking over my microphone. Uh, let me see here. Monday's Raw will be my sister's first ever. I, much respect, man. I hope you guys enjoy, man. Enjoy Raw. I've seen Rock a number of times, even on his comeback. I saw him at 29. I saw him at a Raw in Buffalo when I think it was like the old school Raw where he faced off with Cena and cut a great promo. Uh, enjoy, man. Enjoy the Rock. Enjoy Raw. Vinny says he's going to church and on a date with his girlfriend on Easter. Go Very ahead, nice, brother. Vinny. Very nice. Go ahead, brother. Don't show up to work with a tie on sometimes, especially if you work with machinery. I remember I got yelled at for that. Mm, I did the same mm, thing. Hurts. Went on a date, then came into work with a tie. You know you can't get on machinery today, right? Well, I, I, hope, I hope Vinny's not working on. I hope Vinny's not going to work on Easter. You never know with people, man. <laughs> Just let you know. Don't wear your tie. Someone will try to yell go. at you for that. Mess. Sound advice by the OG. Chad, was good, bro? Appreciate you. Shall we hear comment rant with Eric Bischoff bashing AEW? Don't get me started. I'm trying to be good for the rest of this show. Nitro, Yakima, 1999. Jesse was at that show. Nice. Uh, nice. Eric Douglas, welcome. Uh, Matt is co-signing Super Brawl. Yes, I see Disco going nuts. I just can't believe. <laughs> Yo, did you, no, but Conrad, did you actually watch it? I have it just because I hate the bro, chart buster. It's bro. why do they always have to take someone's finisher and give it to a lesser guy just to be like, yeah, you know that moves garbage, right? bro, bro. What? Just do me a favor. Watch Super Brawl '98. It's the second match of the night. Just watch and tell me that's not as big a. Listen, I'm gonna say something real controversial right now, but I, but I challenge. But before anybody in the chat comes for me, and before you come for me, I want you to watch Super Brawl '98. Now here it comes. Are you ready? Here comes the hot take of the night, and y'all gonna think I'm crazy. When Disco hit the chart buster on La Parka, it was as big a pop as anybody in the industry. Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, the NWO, DX, anybody. I challenge you to watch it and tell right, me I'm, I'm wrong. Now I'm about to watch this. I challenge you to tell me I'm wrong after you watch it. Let me let me give Eric Douglas an update. I know he's a big women's division fan for all the companies. Killer Kelly has been confirmed that she has a contract through 2025. Fightful Select was able to confirm that, so mm. make sure you give them the props if you uh, repeat that information. Let's get into this, folks. If you're in here, hit the like button, subscribe, do all the YouTube things, get in the chat, come talk wrestling. It's all opinions. It's all love, like Sean said. Sean is going to kick things off with, uh, I think, our WrestleMania talk here. For yes, today. yes. Installment two of WrestleMania Retro, man. We're really excited about WrestleMania coming up only 12 days away. And in the spirit of it being 12 days away, we're going to kick our discussion off with some WrestleMania 12 commentary. Um, Hot take for you guys. Hot take for you guys. And everybody knows that I consider um, Shawn Michaels to be the greatest professional wrestler of all time, right? When you take into consideration his uh, his charisma, his athleticism, his wrestling ability, I consider him to be better than Flair, Hogan, Austin, Rock, everybody. 
Now, I think WrestleMania 12, the Iron Man match, dun, 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 was overrated. WrestleMania 12, 60-minute Iron Man match, especially with the way that they decided to go about it as it relates to um, as it relates to there being no falls and it going to overtime. See, Jesse, Jesse, I like Jesse. You're my dog, but you really see this is the problem with Jesse. I, I like Jesse. Jesse's my dog. But you have to see, you can't do that. You can't do that until you ch- take my challenge and go to the network and watch, bro. T- go to the network and watch Super Bowl 98 and then tell me I'm wrong. But anyway, um, yeah, WrestleMania 12, Iron Man match, a little overrated. Tell me what you think, bro. I haven't watched this match in a long time. Mm-hmm. I can say this. I think it's a match that hasn't aged well. Can we say that? Is that more fair? Okay. Okay. It's like kind of a, a moment where, you know, where you kind of knew you were growing up. I can understand if somebody said, the uh, what was the Conrad Thompson line about this match? He doesn't like Iron Man matches because it doesn't matter until the last five minutes. So. And I hear, I hear Connor saying, big shout out to Connor saying that I chose violence out the gate. Think about it, though, bro. Like, I, I feel you. Hey, by the way, and not aging well is a really good way to put it, Conrad. I, I feel you on that. I just, I just watched this match and I'm like. Oh, I mean this, but this. And, 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 and let me say this, and I want you to, I want you to really roll on this one. After I say this, can we not say that Triple H Rock wasn't better? Wait, which which one are you referring to? The Iron Man match. Uh, yeah, that was a better Iron Man match, but right. that was structured differently. They get they got to play by different rules than what Sean and Brett were probably given back then. Okay, but go ahead, give me some more information. I think that with Sean and Brett, the. This was a match that, so this is what I remember from the match. This is personal Conrad. Mm-hmm. My little brother loved Brett the Hitman Hart. Like, that was his dog. That was his guy. I love Brett, too. But I don't love Brett more than Sean. Sean was more my guy. Mm-hmm. So I love Sean. So it was like us, and it was beef. Like, we were sitting there. You know who's about to win. He's not beating Brett the Hitman Hart, bro. It's just not going to happen. We I knew spot for spot what happened in the match. The dive to the outside. Shaw jumps off the ropes. Brett steps back, locks him in the sharpshooter. I remember all of this stuff. Yeah, it. yeah. It meant something back then. Now when you go back and watch it, arm drag, arm drag, leg scissors, mm-hmm. long headlock. Okay, they were trying to build up the story. But when you were watching it live, you were like, who's going to get the first pinfall? Mm-hmm. You were trying to watch it. They were trying to hold you over for that entire time. It made them both look good. What did you feel about the match going to overtime? Uh, and by, the way, and by the way, let me let me preface it by saying, how did you feel about the match going to overtime, and especially going to overtime in the first ever? Like, why would you go to overtime in the first ever? Um, because no one had ever done it before, I think, in wrestling. Because the only ones I can remember before that was it Rick Rude and Ricky Steamboat. No, but I'm with you. 30 minutes. But what I'm saying, uh, uh, Beach Blast, I'm with you. But you're not hearing me, bro. What I'm saying to you, bro, is 60 minutes and then overtime in the first ever Iron Man. Why? Do you know why? Talk to me. What does Gomez like? He loved those first time ever. No one had ever did it to where, well, what happens if it's a tie? You're going to let the show end like that in a tie? You can't okay. let the show okay. end. Like- so, oh, the big swerve. And then, like I said, I can remember the last two minutes. Boom, bam, boom, bam. Super kick. Sean's down. Then Brett gets up again. Another super kick falls on him. I can see the leg even curled. One, two, three. And I just remember my brother saying, I hate you. Bret Hart action figure thrown at me. Caught it off the face. I didn't care. I was happy. And then, you know, my dad had to, like, call him over. It's all right, buddy. Sometimes your favorites lose. He'll he'll win it back. He'll win it back. That's and he gave fun. him the whole thing. So was it bad? No, I just think it's one of those matches that just didn't age well. And it was like the – it showed why they had to move to a different era. Yeah. Moving okay. forward. Sound insight, bro. So let's move on a little bit. Um, A few years down the line, two years actually, HBK – that was when the HBK run started. So we know it at 14 – HBK's era ended and it ended because a little prematurely because he had a severe back injury. Thank God he was able to come back four years later and probably, and people say arguably he was better when he came back four years later than he, what he was when he, when he left. 
Um, but look, so HBK wins the title at WrestleMania 12. He's on and off, losing his smile, getting his smile back, doing what he had to do. And then we get to WrestleMania 14 where the baton's going to be past the Stone Cold Steve Austin. Now, Chat and Conrad, my thing is this, guys. When Shawn Michaels walked into WrestleMania, he walked in hurt. So passing the baton to Stone Cold Steve Austin was the only thing they could do. Not that Stone Cold didn't deserve it. Not that Stone Cold wasn't hot as fish grease at the time. But my question to you, Conrad and Chad, is what if HBK went into that match healthy? HBK wasn't going to lose to The Undertaker at Royal Rumble 98. HBK wouldn't have lost the title on the road to WrestleMania. So a perfectly healthy Shawn Michaels walking into WrestleMania 14 what does the landscape of wrestling look like in WWE if HBK doesn't go off the scene? Because the Austin era beginning was kind of because, again, all due respect to Stone Cold, but the Austin era began kind of by default because Shawn Michaels couldn't continue. That, and I think that uh, there was elevation because I feel like at 14, the match would have probably really been Austin and Bret again. Mm-hmm. In the main event rematch, and this time Austin gets him. Okay. With a different guest ref. That's just me planning, and if things were in a perfect world. Okay. But that didn't happen after 13. We ended up where Brett left. Sean's on, Sean's on top. Sean hurts his back immediately after that. Um, I don't know. I don't know. And, and did Sean have enough pull, do you think, at that time to keep the belt? Was DX that hot? I don't know. Well, Clown brings up a great point. He says that Triple H would have never got his shot to be the leader of DX. Because, again, I can't stress this enough, Conrad. I know I'm preaching to the choir, bro. HBK does not disappear after he loses at WrestleMania 14 if he's not injured. You know what I'm saying? Easy. What up? HBK doesn't leave the scene. HBK is on Raw the next night, bro. So what happens to Triple H? What happens to X-Pac? What happens to Stone Cold Steve Austin? Is there a rematch between HBK and Stone Cold? Does Shawn Michaels win the title back? I mean, Austin, like I said, again, with all due respect to Stone Cold, the Austin era began by default because HBK was hurt. HBK had to leave. Vinny does bring up a good point as well. If you remember the story, take a first match with Kane. And Taker goes backstage, but he sits down by the monitor and gorilla, and they're like, what, what are you doing? And then he pulls out tape, and they're like, what are you doing? He was like, oh, he's dropping that belt tonight. <laughs> he was like, there are going to be no games. And if not, when he comes back here, he's going to have to see me. And they said yeah, Taker but- taped up his hands and was going to put hands on Shawn Michaels if he pulled any like fast stuff. And this is a little after Montreal, so I get people not trusting. Yeah, 100%, but the, even that situation doesn't take place if HBK is healthy. Why do you say that? Undertaker, I, I I heard I read the same story. You you do as much homework as I do, bro. So we're on the same page. I understand Undertaker was going to make sure Shawn Michaels did business like th- that night, but part of Undertaker's gripe was that HBK didn't think he needed to do business, even though he was hurt. That was part of it. Stone, uh, Undertaker felt Stone Cold's time had come, but part of it was that yo, Shawn, wake up and smell the coffee. You're injured. Give it up. That was part of what made The Undertaker feel like Shawn Michaels was going to pull some crap. Yeah, absolutely. And, well, it depends on who you believe, too. Um, I've heard people, uh, tennis racket man, we'll just call him for the purposes of this. Yeah. They wonder if Shawn was actually hurt or was Shawn sent to go clean him, clean himself up. For four years? Ooh, ooh. You didn't want to lose it. We gave you an out to losing it. Now go get your stuff together and then come back. He came back four years later. Um, I, I just wonder if, and maybe if they really wanted to get the belt off of him, maybe you put him in a shoot with like Ken Shamrock. You'd say, all right, Ken Shamrock, if he doesn't tap, then snap it. You know what I mean? You don't know. Wrestling was different back then. They were like, yeah, nah, make it look good. Make it look good. Uh, I'm going to the chat real quick for some of these. Um Matt Lopez says if Sean wasn't a hundred percent, I don't, th- I don't know. I think Austin was always going to win, but I think if Bret Hart was not in contract disputes, he would have faced Stone Cold at Mania. That's what I always mm-hmm. thought. Mm-hmm. Uh, people are saying that is a legit debate. What did you say, James? I can't find it. Oh, Oscar, Oscar over Goldberg. Um, 
let me see here. Guy will gamble says maybe they move into triple H GX triple H or HBK from DX. If he's healthy and drops the belt. Mm-hmm. I just triple H wasn't ready for that spot yet though. At the time they were trying to get him ready, but it, it just elevated people on the card. Like you said, Brett leaving elevated Austin elevated a bunch of other people up into the card. Uh, Gorilla Monsoon should have said something just in case it went into overtime would have been a bigger build. I don't think so. I think I like it that it was a surprise because it had me, it had my heart drop when I first seen it. I was like, they did it again. <laughs> well, to me, Bret Hart won the match. Gorilla Monsoon is the World Wrestling Federation's commissioner. At the time. <laughs> yeah, him, and Jack, him and Jack Tunney, right? <laughs> yeah, so their word is final. That's it. That's it. That's just how this goes. That's how the cookie crumbles. Uh, I think Mike Tyson's involvement changed it. I was reading up about this actually when uh, I was doing my homework for this one, man. And Stone Cold said he hated that match for 14. I kind of feel him, but I could tell Sean put on a great performance with someone who had an injured back. Just the way he was going across the ropes and stuff. Something. I think he was hurt, personally. I think he was hurt. I think he was hurt. And I think uh, only Mike Tyson, respect him. He just got to learn how to count, bro. Like the That's count- what Austin said he hated the fast count. He wanted the slow count for his first title run. And he was just like, there we go. Yeah. So Stone Cold era begins in 1998 at WrestleMania, and it it rolls all the way through 1999. He gets injured in 2000, late 99 into 2000. He makes his triumphant return in late 2000 at uh, the October pay-per-view, No Mercy. Or actually, he made his initial return at Unforgiven, 1990, uh, 2000, excuse me, 2000. So we move forward into 2001. And you can kind of see the rubber meet in the road. You can see that Rock's on top of his game. You can see that Austin's heading into the Royal Rumble. Austin wins the Royal Rumble, his third Royal Rumble of his career. The Rock wins the title back at No Mercy, excuse me, at No Way Out against Kurt Angle. And all of a sudden, you got Austin Rock, too. Just one. More <laughs> Where's BJ in the chat? Take Deborah out the equation. <laughs> the greatest video promo I think of all time. Easily, easily. Of all time. That encapsulated my fandom. Like when you asked me, like, what is the moment where you felt like you were at peak as a wrestling fan? It's that moment. Just the build to that and watching that show. Yeah, it gave absolutely. me a gimmick battle royal for everything. Goosebumps right now. As a kid. <laughs> The, what's the worst match on the card? The match with the APA where they were just dominating people? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> no, don't give me that. Yeah. It was so good. People just don't realize. Like I'm like, oh, dude, it's just an amazing card. 17 was lit. It was really- 17 was lit. It's my but, one thing that, but one thing that wasn't lit in a lot of people's eyes was the way the show ended. I don't have a problem Stone Cold Steve Austin going over in, in, in 2001 against The Rock. I'm cool with that. I mean, I wanted The Rock to win, but Austin winning in Texas, that makes sense, right? But one of the most controversial decisions, maybe in the history of wrestling, is that Stone Cold Steve Austin aligns himself with Gomez. He shakes the hand of the guy that made him famous for all the opposite reasons. He became famous by beating the crap out of this guy. And on one fell swoop in his home state at WrestleMania, Stone Cold aligns himself with McMahon. What the heck was this? This, so here's my argument to this. This goes back kind of to WrestleMania 12. Take out any revisionist history. I shouldn't say revisionist because it actually happened. Take out what you knew going forward. Okay. Leave it to where the night ended. I remember everybody who I knew who watched it was like, this right. is the craziest ending of all time. I can't believe they did that. End scene. That was mm-hmm. it. Now, what happened from it, we did get some of the best comedy we've ever seen from Stone Cold. I think right. I think people right. put up why it was so bad, but I think it was really good too. Then they had the chance to easily get away from it when they had Austin go back to uh, like the Alliance and all that stuff. And I'm I'm gonna represent WWF because I hate WCW. Nope, got you again. Just right. a, a swerve to swerve, and I just never understood why they did that. 
Um, they had their out, and they just didn't do it. I, like I said, I think at the end of 17, best WrestleMania, I will stand on that moment that turning Austin heel, I was not mad at it when they did it at the time. It just didn't turn out the way we Okay, I mean, I, I, I understand the shock value. I just think it was one of those things that's like... I wasn't it, expecting comedy after. That's what I wasn't expecting. Right. I laughed at it. Well, the backstage segment segments with Stone Cold, Vince, and Kurt Angle are some of the funniest things I've ever seen. You know what I'm saying? So there's no question about that. I mean, just Austin, I think Austin's character took a little bit of a hit, but it was what it was. So... You know, for me, it was just one of those things. You just didn't see it coming. So, the look, then you move forward into WrestleMania 18, right? Stone Cold Steve Austin's in the midst of a run where he's not really going to be happy. He's about to take his ball and go home. But one thing everybody's happy about and excited about is the match that should have been the main event of the evening. Hollywood Hulk Hogan, a man who we thought was over the hill in 2002, resurrects his career and faces The Rock, the future of the company, even though that future would only last about six more months. And they put on the match of the year. My question to you is, and this is a chat, yay or nay chat, was Hogan and Rock good enough, big enough, where they should have switched it with the world title match at the end? Because we all remember Jericho and Triple H was weak. That was hot garbage. Oh, this was the beginning of a pattern for Triple H. Yeah, I mean, and we're going to get into 19 real heavy in a second, guys. Don't think I'm letting that go. Another question. Should Hogan have won that match? Should they have made a deviation? No. Okay, tell me why. Because I think they should have. I think that I so I did not predict Hogan's response to be that in Toronto. And and I think that night was the moment where I knew, okay, when Hogan's in Canada, like Hogan's the baby face to them no matter what at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that um the right call though was to put the rock over. He's the new guy, he was the superstar, he stayed loyal to you, he didn't hurt your business. That guy did. You know what I mean? That guy was the one who was trying to tear you down. Is it cool for him to come in and have a run? Absolutely. Uh, did I think it would have been better if it was the NWO versus Austin and Rock with an advantage? Yes. Mm -hmm. But we never got to that point because the fans turned Hulk Hogan babyface. Yes. So, I mean, it, it goes down with one of the greatest matches of all time. I mean, at the end of the day, it's one of those things where, like, you know, look at the 17 situation with Austin. The alliance turned out to be hilarious. Um and then you have Hogan turning babyface, winning the title again, which was a, a, something you never thought would happen at, at his age in 2000 and 2002. But the following year, guys, we're going to get into something real heavy, man. And it's something we've talked about on the show before. WrestleMania 19, Triple H. Oh, man, I, I just got chills in a bad way when you – oh. I'm sorry. WrestleMania 19. Booker T, who's pretty, who's on a roll, who just won a battle royal, last eliminating The Rock, Hollywood Rock, to get a title shot, goes up against Triple H. And in the lead up to this match, we get the infamous nappy head dance promo from Triple H to Booker T. Now, at the end of the day, all right? I don't like – I'm not a racist, so I don't believe in racism. Um, I don't like it. It, it, it infuriates me. Um, if you're going to do that, if you really are going to do that, and you're doing it for what you believe – oh, Vinny, you're, you're right, though. You're right, Vinny. If you're going to do that, Booker T – has to win the match. There, there is no way that you can have Booker T on national television getting spoken to like that by Triple H. Dance for me, Book. I love your nappy head, Book. 
The thought of you wrestling me at WrestleMania makes me laugh, book. It makes me cringe. And then on top of that, ladies and gentlemen, Triple H hits a pedigree and takes 25 seconds to crawl into the pin. The referee counts one. The referee counts two. The referee counts three. Conrad. It's all about the game. <laughs> Conrad, your thoughts on, in my opinion, I might be going out on a limb here. One of the most controversial, racially insensitive to coin, to take that phrase away from easy, racially insensitive moments in the history of professional wrestling. Do, 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 do. I'm not surprised by this. Um, I I just did not like the build up to it because I went in saying, okay, now that they did that, I remember that night and I was like, Booker T has to become the world champion. There's no other way to do this, but Booker T has to become the world champion. And when I saw that pedigree hit, I was like, okay, it took some time. Maybe Booker's going to kick out, get his foot on the rope or something. He was a little far away. And I didn't watch this live back then either. I watched this like later on after and I was like, what? He didn't win. And when I go to hear on the the you know the old dirt sheets and stuff, oh, oh Bill Goldberg needs a top heel to work with. I'm the guy. Oh, oh. No, no, he could have worked with you without the title. Why? Why did you need that right then and there? I, I don't like that era of Triple H. Like James, Jesse, anyone who's known me long enough, I will tell you Triple H's reign of terror is awful he put down rob van dam who was more than ready to be champion i know they gave it to him in 2006 you're four years too late you could have gave the belt to kane at one point kane was kane was super over in 02 03 yep. 03 yep yeah i call that kane looking like he ran through the electrical department at lowe's yep <laughs> he was yep. over though he was talking crazy and you have booker t he was over he was people over. wanted booker t why why do we do this? Like, I just don't get it. It just, I don't that get one it. Hurt. That one hurt. A couple of questions for the chat, though. I want to know from you, Conrad, do you think WrestleMania 20 in the Garden is overrated? I was thinking about that show. WrestleMania 20, Madison Square Garden, obviously the man that will remain, name, remain nameless, Triple H and Shawn Michaels had a really good triple threat match. It was the return of The Undertaker versus Kane. Um, clearly not as good as WrestleMania 14, but it was The Undertaker versus Kane. Um, you had Jericho and Christian. Rock and Sock and Evolution was okay. Cena did a good job against Big Show and Kurt and Eddie Guerrero was a classic. But you also had matches like Brock versus Goldberg, arguably the worst match in WrestleMania history. You also have matches like a fatal four-way for the tag team championship with no ladders and no tables. Let's go, Caden Jindrak. Right. It was, it was kind of like, uh, like, how did you feel about that show? I was actually there. So I, it was cool to be in the building, but I don't know, bro. I like parts of this show. Um, I think so. If you ask me like best mania, I put 17 at one, 19's at two. Um, 20 has a great match on it that I loved uh, involving Triple H, Shawn Michaels and Stevie Richards. Uh, I actually really enjoyed the Rock and Sock match, even though it hurts my feelings every time I watch it because I really thought Mick Foley was supposed to kick out of that RKO. Like, like, it, it hurt me to watch him, and then he got up, and I was like, were you supposed to do something? Because I feel like that was not the ending of the match. Right. But but Rock's, uh, he gets Ric Flair on the ropes, and he does the, the little strut, the people's elbow, and it was great to see that stuff. So some of it was good. And other parts of it was like, eh, we need to work on the tag division. Why are Booker T and Rob Van Dam in a tag team match Weird. at WrestleMania? Weird. Weird. This was the beginning of like, we don't have anything for the Intercontinental title. And this went on for like a decade. Like, oh, we don't know what to do. Oh, we'll put you in the, this multi-man match. Um, I'm with you, though. I, I think 20, you can argue, is a little overrated uh, slightly for some of it. So the following year, we go to WrestleMania 20, 
one. And HBK has a classic with Kurt Angle, amazing. HBK has a classic with Gomez. And then WrestleMania 23, and this is one that's kind of near and dear to my heart because Triple H gets injured. It was actually Triple H's, uh, it was Triple H's destiny storyline-wise to go back-to-back at WrestleMania against John Cena at 22 and 23. Triple H busts his quad again, and Shawn Michaels gets ushered into the main event. Does anybody besides me think Shawn Michaels should have won that match against John Cena at WrestleMania 23? I'll tell you this. John Cena was definitely outclassed in that match. He certainly was. He looked out of place. And I can see Shawn's frustration like, dude, what are you doing right now? You're not even on my level, bro. Yeah, like, and and, and you know what upset me too about this, like, match? Why did Shawn come out with the DX music? I get that he was in DX, but it was just weird. Like, I oh, was he, like, was in, no. he was in DX. Like, DX was still the thing until I guess, but I guess, Triple H was hurt. yeah, Triple H was that was the culmination. And then the next night he went back to HBK music. Yeah, it was just weird that they, yeah. you know, he just came out. Did, 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 did. I'm like, oh, he ain't that entrance. That entrance was lit though. Yeah, they they tried it, they did their best. Sean went out there and proved why he was still really good. Um, he tried to bring something out in Cena that night. I think they have a far, far better match at uh, uh, Monday, Night it, Raw, Monday Night in Raw London. in London. Yes, the 60 was it 60 minutes or 30? Yes, I can't it was, remember it was how long 60 it minutes. Was. But yeah, that was a much better match, I thought. And I thought Cena like realized I have to step it up if I'm going to be in the spot. Well, look, at the end of the day, man, another trip down WrestleMania memory lane. Next week, we're going to talk about John Cena. We're going to talk about, yeah, Batista and, and Taker was a, was a banger. And maybe it should have made a minute, but I, I'll never say HBK shouldn't have made a event. But Taker and Batista was definitely last match of the night worthy. Um, next, we're going to talk about the Cena era. We're going to talk about the streak and Brock Lesnar. Oh, my God, that's going to be lit. We're going to talk about Goldberg and Lesnar making up for WrestleMania 20 at WrestleMania 33. That and a lot more. But right now, as we come back to the main dance of what's going on in the here and now, we're going to talk about Jade Cargill, because in the current landscape of WWE, we are 12 days away from WrestleMania. And last week on SmackDown, it was announced that Jade Cargill is officially SmackDown ready. Conrad, this young lady made a really good impression at the Royal Rumble. We have not seen her in the ring since. She is still one of the hottest free agents in the game. Obviously, that free agency has ended. She's going into SmackDown next Friday, this coming Friday, as a SmackDown superstar. WrestleMania is on the horizon. Naomi doesn't have a match. Bianca Belair doesn't have a match. Damage Control doesn't have a match. What's the future of Jay Cargill? What are we looking at as she now makes SmackDown her home? You have options here, I feel like. You could go... Bianca and Naomi challenge for the tag titles, which I think will be an awesome match. That'll be fine Mm -hmm. if they wanted to. You could also go, okay, let's get Dakota Kai a WrestleMania match and let's include Jay Cargill on the team. Mm -hmm. You could do Nia Jax needs an opponent on Raw. Jade says, I'll represent SmackDown and face Nia, which I think would be better for Jade, but I don't know if they're going to go that route. That's two matches now instead of one. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So to me, if you're debuting her now, you have to kind of want to do something here. Well, you know, I, I look at it kind of like she she certainly didn't fumble the bag at the Royal Rumble, right? She I don't think the Royal Rumble could have went better for her. So now you're going in a situation where you have a plethora of opportunities and some of the highest profile females on the roster still don't have matches. Nia Jax, you, you're 100% right. Liv Morgan doesn't have a match. There's so many females on this roster, high-profile names that don't have matches. So it's kind of like, do you want to water it down with a six-woman tag? I'd rather them go for the tag team titles, Jade and and Bianca. Maybe the team breaks up down the line and they end up facing each other at SummerSlam or something like that. Um, Who's the real Amazon, beautiful black Amazon of WWE? Me or Jade or me or, or Bianca. I would love to see that as they hold the tag team titles for three or four months. But... You don't want to eliminate damage control as a as a team because Dakota's healthy now. So is Dakota Dakota just going to be in the in the corner, or do you want to make it a six woman tag? 
Yeah, because I feel like Dakota, when's she going to get her moments too? You know what I mean? She's been around for a few years now, so it's either you give them to them or you don't. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's the best way to do this here. I, I think it depends on what you're going to do with others on Raw. Like you said, Liv, Nia. Uh, they haven't really announced a, a Battle Royal or anything else either. There's no uh, sensational, invitational for Sherry Martell or something. Do something here, people. Like, come up with something for them to do. I just think there's so many talented people in the women's division that they need something. There's a lot of – where's Ricochet? He's not on this card. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people where you have to be asking yourself, like, what, what what's happening here? What and, my, and my thing, Conrad, is this, and, and, and tell me if you feel me on this. We don't have to go the obvious route of Jade versus Bianca. Like, these, like I said, two beautiful black athletic superstars – that kind of mirror each other. Oh, we have to have them face each other at Mania. Like that's not necessarily the case. True. I mean, but that's, but that's oh, I mean, that would seem like the writing on the wall when they faced up, up against each other at the Royal Rumble. I'm like, come on, man, don't do the obvious, man. You don't have to always go the obvious route. We all see the similarities. Like I said, I'm gonna say it again: two beautiful, strong black women. We see the similarities, but that doesn't mean you have to put them up against each other. I think that you have to. Um, and what I about think, Tiffany Stratton too? Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, she's not in, in it either. That you're bringing you're bringing up great points. Like, here's the thing I don't understand with Jade, and this is going to be me being mean. People were talking. I saw you know the whole WWE versus AEW tribalism stuff. I don't understand how. Oh, they were getting Jade ready for TV. Blah 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 blah. Who put Maxine on TV then? Why mm -hmm. would you set her up to fail, but not Jade? Like, what is this? Right. Jade seemed more than ready at the Royal Rumble, but maybe they felt like, oh, it was just some spots. Don't worry about it. You you have to do right by her, and I feel like she's going to come out on SmackDown, and the announcement's going to be, I'm making my debut at WrestleMania. Mm. Opponent to be determined? Maybe. Maybe that's how they do it. Maybe it's an open challenge of some sort. I don't know what they to which, do. To which Nia Jax would answer I think so. I think that would right. be the best person to put in there. Um, That's actually a really good idea from a creative standpoint, Conrad, because you can make sure she's on the card and there's still this surprise element of who her opponent, opponent's going to be. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just want them to do something different, like you said. But there's still plenty of people who you just mentioned Tiffany Strand. We forgot to even mention her. Why is she not on this card? Like, I get it. You can't have everybody on the card either for WrestleMania, but... There's a lot of people who I think are very talented and you could put in these spots. Yeah, but you know what? I don't I don't believe in squeezing everybody in, but I believe in squeezing in these uh, few I mean, Naya as much as you know how much I I've, I've said about Naya. Naya needs to get herself together, but she's been doing better, I guess. Naya is over enough to be at Mania. Naomi's over enough to be at Mania. Obviously Bianca, obviously Jade. Tiffany Stratton is hot as fish grease right now, with the exception of her crappy music. So, figure it out. Liv, to me, Liv should be there. I, I, I'm not a big Liv fan, but Liv should be on the card. And it doesn't have to be the automatic cop out, bro. I'm so sick of this cop out. Well, we could just throw him into the battle royal. No, man. I don't even think there is a battle royal. That's been on SmackDown. Well, that I mean, it's on SmackDown, but it's still WrestleMania. Like, you know what I'm trying to say, Jay Uz. I'm. I agree, it's not the same, but like they've been copping out and doing that. Yeah. Look at your pay per view checks and tell me what it says. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Where'd I feel you, you on wrestle? That. I feel you on that. Uh, Jay Cargill is going to be regulated to a six woman tag. Sir Quill says against damage control, but I'd rather see Jay Cargill versus Nia Jax to continue that Bianca and Naomi for the women's tag championships. It's kind of crazy that Bianca's in a tag match. For how well she's done every year, but Agreed. I get sometimes you got to cool people off too. Right, but let's make those tag. Here's a chance to make those tag titles mean something. Hit the reset button and do it right. You got a major, major free agent teaming up with a multi-time world champion going up against a former NXT champion, the longest reigning SmackDown champion I think, or longest reigning NXT champion ever with the streak. And don't oh, want to talk about the streak and Goldberg and oh my God, here we go. But anyway, that's a match. That's a good match. Uh, Kabuki Warriors versus Jade and, and Bianca would be box office. Yeah, I think it'll be great. A lot of people seem to be pretty high on Jade in the chat too. Like Mike, guy will get. I'm just seeing a bunch of people just saying like, yeah, let's do it. 
Uh, Quills is saying that maybe he, they should start a faction with Jade, Naomi, and Bianca, a dominant African American three woman faction. That sounds like a good idea, but you know what? You that know what that means. means. There you go. Uh, McKinney says to give Maxine some defense. That's the character they're trying to portray: a model manager turned a wrestler who was learning from the Alpha Academy. I think they knew from that Rhea Ripley match that this is going to be bad going forward. So now they're just trying to get her some additional training, and Candice LeRae is here to help. You know what I mean? Right, it, I it's still clarify because you know in 20, 2024, you know how things can go. The definition, by the way, guys, just in case anybody was you know wondering, the definition of woman being called an Amazon is a woman who is physically larger than average, powerful, and muscular. So, once again, I just want to be clear because it's real easy to be canceled in 2024. Amazon is a compliment. She, I, I said that Jade and Bianca are two beautiful, athletic Amazons, and that, by definition, is correct. He's trying to get snoo snoo, y'all. Just I'm just, trying to, <laughs> I'm just trying to, you know, because, you know, Amazon is a compliment. They're both beautiful black women, but they're very muscular and very strong, yes. I know the future Rama fans know what I'm talking about with the snoo snoo. <laughs> all right, take it easy. It's all right. It's all love over here. There you go. Um, yeah, uh, do they still get WrestleMania bonus on SmackDown, or do they just get an intro like Bobby Lash? Oh man, I felt yo, Bobby Lash is not getting a match this year again. What did he do? What did he do to not get a match this year? I, I think that's crazy too. That's another name that I'm just like, I don't get it. Mm-hmm. Um, let me see here. Uh, <laughs> someone said blow the whistle on this man. Amazon is also a search term, but you ain't heard that from me. Cut it out, guy. We'll gamble. Cut it out. Cut it out. Um, speaking of that, we do have some amazing things coming up tonight. Don't forget Monday Night Raw is going to be on. Chicago, Illinois. CM Punk will be in the house. I see Drew McIntyre's got his troll videos out already at Mindy's Bakery. What kind of bakery is closed on Mondays? <laughs> And he went there and uh, was trying to be funny. Muffins probably suck anyway. (laughs) So I'm sure we're going to get some interaction with Punk and Drew. Uh, We've got a couple singles matches that are up as well. Uh, I believe it was Sami Zayn, Big Brots, and Reed was one of the matchups. Uh, Hold on here. I'm pulling up these other ones. We got Ivy Nile, Candice LeRae, Andrade versus Ivar. Sean, are any of these just getting you so hyped for Monday Night Raw? Thank God, Rick, thank God CM Punk's on the show. Ricochet and JD McDonough. I'm Ten sorry, five. Mike. Excuse me while I take a nap. Yeah. An- Death by Snoo Snoo. I know you know. Another thing, how can someone like Maxine Dupree get chances in the ring, but B Fab cannot? Where does this make sense? Give B Fab a chance. That's true. I'm hoping they don't pull what James had said earlier and they're like, let's replace B Fab with. Insert whoever from SmackDown here. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's happening with that tag match. Uh, I guess we'll take the wait and see approach. You're still hyped for Mania, though, right? Like, it's getting there. It's getting, We're getting closer. We're inching towards it. Like, it's like climbing the ladder. Yeah, it's, been, it's, better, it's better for me than what it was two months ago. I, I see where they're going. Look, you can't go wrong with having Rock, Roman, Seth, and Cody on both nights. They, they got that part right, even though technically Rock might not be on both nights. But we know the Rock's going to be on both nights. He better be, right? Um, but there, I mean, there is a chance that Cody and Seth can win, and, and they honor it, and Rock doesn't show up, and then Cody gets screwed by somebody else. Right. Uh, and don't forget, if you are in the chat, stick around till the end. We are giving out a code for Triller TV's Grit Your Teeth by Wrestling Revolver Thursday, March 28th, being main evented by Ali and the homie Rich Swan. <laughs> it's going to be going down. Make sure that you guys are in the chat. If you want to be entered, make sure you use the hashtag EPW Hub. That's two Bs. Thank you, sir. Put, put it in the chat. And uh, make sure you guys show some love here. People said Andrade versus Ivar got changed to Andrade versus Giovanni Vinci due to Ivar not being cleared. By the way, a real a quick side note. Tiffany Stratton is dating. Uh, what's his name from Imperium? Giovanni Vinci? G- no, no, the other one. Ludwig Kaiser? Yeah, Ludwig Kaiser is, is Tiffany Stratton's boyfriend. Hey, I mean, 
I mean, I'm not hating, but holy crap. Hey, listen, bro. Get in where you fit in, bro. I I mean, I'm, not, I'm not mad at him. I'm not mad at him. I'm just like, when I heard that, I was like, ooh, okay, all right. Right. Pro Wrestle Shoot asks, what is Rev Pro? Rev Pro is a UK based promotion. Is that an outlaw mud show? Uh, Will Osprey wrestled over there a lot and was the champion over there. I wouldn't say that. They have some uh, talented wrestlers. Michael Aku is also from over there. Ludwig Kaiser, Marcel Bartel. Look at people. I'm not hating. I'm not. Listen, get it where you fit. No, Guy Will Gamble said he is hating. Wait a minute. Oh, he said I'm hating. Wow. Mm. Sean, get your guy, man. What's I'm going saying, on here? Look, tip respectfully, Tiffany Stratton is bad. And, I mean, I guess you got to say shout out to Ludwig Kaiser. You don't know. He might be coming out with the Jays on when he leaves yeah, out. Yeah, I guess. I mean, God bless. I mean, it is what it is. You try, you try to go to a, a premium restaurant where you need a membership to go out. He's taking her to the Costco. You can't hate on that, bro. That's, if that's what he's doing. I'm just saying, yo. Ludwig Kaiser has to have some hidden swag to be able to pull that off. Uh oh, McKinney said Kaiser snatched her up while she was in NXT. Yeah, let me get her. Let me get her real early before she gets up to the main roster. I feel what you're saying, McKinney. Matt Matt Lopez says Trick Williams is dating Lash Legend. Oh boy, love is in the air in NXT. It appears. Well, it's getting hot outside, so you know that's not going to last long. Uh, you know the foolishness comes when it gets warm outside. People about to be outside, outside in a couple of weeks. Uh, forget the big three, homie. It's just big me. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Bars. Yo, shout out to Kendrick. Shout out to K Dot. Bars. Drake, 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 we still await your response <laughs> wherever you are. Um, let's let's talk dynamite. I guess. Yeah, man. Look, look. Let's. I want you to take the lead on this, and I'm just gonna. I'm gonna set you up, and I want you to go. Much respect to, to AEW. They did a very successful. We need to celebrate when they do well. AEW was awesome last Wednesday, and they had a very successful show. They filled the house. Bruh, AEW did a good job, man. We need to celebrate when they do good and not just make fun of them when they do bad. 100%, bro. That's That's exactly how I feel, too. Like... I just don't get it. And is it weird every time AEW's up, here comes a news article. Like, I just wait for it. It's like clockwork at this point. Uh, uh, oh, something good happened? Who's going to say something ridiculous this week or do something on Twitter that's going to make everyone look bad? Um, it, I, I, like you said, I personally think since Dynamite changed the logos, went back to the two tunnels, they've been on point every week. They've done it smart. As my co-host on Wednesday nights, Derek, has said. Do my guy, Derek. Us- do not give us all three of these new signings every week. Will Ospreay promo, Mercedes promo, Okada in action. Next week, they're going to have Osprey in action. I don't see a Mercedes match yet. Right. It's smart. And I don't know if they're going to wait till the pay per view for that or whatnot, but this is what they're doing. They gave you the video packages. What are you complaining about? What is there to complain about this week? Oh, did you see what the new one was this week, Sean? Back in 2019, Tony Khan said to Chris Van Vliet, yeah, I think WCW is spending way too much money on some of their wrestlers. You can't afford to pay everyone $100,000. Well, what is he doing now? Oh, well, there's a sellout. We don't have anything to talk about, so now we're going to complain about that. It's ridiculous. It's like they try to conjure things up. I don't know. It's just it's just too weird. But let, let's get into parts of this show, I guess, real quick. Oh uh, God! Oh God! What is it? The theme? Yeah, man. We were talking about this early. Go ahead, bro. I don't nah, want you to talk, man. I just, uh, it's been it's been fair, man. It's been I don't fair. know, man. That that theme is tough, bro, and not in a good way. I I think they can change it eventually. Um, Maybe she was dead set on trying something new. I, I just think it hurts because it's too uh, Walter-esque, we'll say. Like, oh, when I hear that theme, I think listen, of Walter. Listen, listen, bro. Listen, 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 listen. I heard the track, bro. I heard the track. I heard I heard the track in its entirety. Homie, it's just Big Me. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it, it, it's, 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 it's not giving, bro. It's not giving. And y'all know how I feel about Mercedes Monet. I I think she's one of the top three in the game right now. But 
that theme is wickedly trash. L- listen, let's just say, bruh, let's bruh, say, she, let's say you're Tony Cow. Oh you you got the bread. Oh. Just imagine you got the bread in your hand, Sean. She's coming to you. She's like, listen, here's what I need. I need this. I need that. And I want this song to be my song. CEO. You know what? I'll sure. Fine. We'll talk her out of it later. Sure. I'll take it. Let's go. Let's no, but, start doing no, this. But you're focusing on the wrong thing, my brother. God bless you, but you're focusing on the wrong thing. I'm telling you, I heard her spit on the track. I don't care. They will change that stuff. You know how many times we heard good themes and they've changed it? Dude, Tiffany Stratton had a perfectly great theme. and then Tiffany Stratton's theme was fire, bro, and they changed it. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, there's finally a good theme. Change Ricochet's theme if you want to change someone's theme. That theme is garbage. There you go. I hate whoever does music for WWE now. It is bad. Um, do I think Ruckus or someone will eventually talk her into it, or maybe she'll change it by the pay per view? Maybe AEW's changed themes too a lot of times. People don't realize. Think of how many different versions of people's themes that they've been already. Just think about it for a second. Just pick some random person on the card and just be like, "Oh yeah, he has had like three themes already." Because they <laughs> they make tweaks and they'll change them and tweak them. Um, I'm hoping that that mercedes hears that and she's like yeah let's tweak this a little well, bit all let's i can it. say is this because i want to be fair because i want to make a, i want to say to the chat that conrad makes an amazing point so all they have to do to mercedes music is change the lyrics change the music change the hook and change the background and it'll be fine yeah that's all they have to do <laughs> just change the <laughs> ch- change the whole song and they'll be good to go just make a little tweak as in like Tweak the song out of the rotation, and then it'll, everything will be fine. Sean's like, yeah, just click it, drag it over to the side <laughs> All, all right, and do. now we're, we're clean slate. Let's start again. Conrad, you you're always fair. Just tweak it a little bit by changing the chorus, change the hook, change the melody, change the beat, change the drums, change the treble, and change everything, and it'll be fine. Right? I'm loving people saying that they're hyped for Dynasty, for Will Ospreay, Brian Danielson. People always hating on the company. That's true. I thought the Jungle Boy story was just poor timing again. Uh, Mercedes Monet is a goddess. Uh, CEO. I I don't listen. I think she's going to deliver in the ring. That's not what they they're not paying her for for her vocals and all that stuff. And like I said, you can barely hear the track. <laughs> I, I don't know why they picked. Were we were we supposed to forget? Is that that's another thing? Were we supposed to forget? What that was Walter's theme? Yeah, I mean we remembered crisscross. I feel like they wanted just the CEO chance. Like they wanted a song where people would chant that, but you can't have it be like a hip hop song where people are gonna do that too much. I, I think there was a better way to do it. It but shouldn't they have been a hip hop song. No, I'm um, saying, hello. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. Oh, okay. What I'm saying is that beat for Walter's song doesn't really fit. It, it fits for chanting the CEO, but I don't think it fits the rap it doesn't fit the rest of it and it comes off as kind of like oh you, you ripped this off a little bit um huh, remember dustin's first theme it was okay then they added the violin and the symphony yeah yeah t3z you're let me start by saying you're 100 correct but dustin's first theme was not as bad as this this is bad and you know what also makes it worse i don't think sasha's ever had a bad theme before this i do you do. I do. I do not like the Snoop Dogg version. In oh, well, you say you don't like the Snoop, but it wasn't terrible, though. It was, uh, I don't know. Okay. I wasn't you thought it was too commercial. Too huh? slow and yeah. uh, Snoopy and Bloopy and let's go wow. We could do a doggy <laughs> and froggy style. Like, no offense. I, I, I used to rap. So, like, uh, you could do this for long enough and you're just like, dog, what is this? Come on. No, Even- Conrad, nobody on this show has more authority to talk about hip hop than you. I just didn't think you disliked it that much. No, I really didn't like it. I don't like Cody's version with Snoop Dogg. Do you, uh, y'all know I love AEW Cody. Mm-hmm. Now, Cody's come out with that Snoop theme and I was like, wrestling has more than one royal family. And I was like, what is this? This is bad. This is bad. <laughs> Stop this. You know what I mean? And I oh, think man. I think Mercedes just she wanted to be a superstar. She wanted to do it all. And yeah, leave, I love Snoop's regular music, but Snoop's wrestling music has not hit for me in a minute. Not since the uh, old WWF CDs. So I don't know, man. Yeah, Def Rebel does all the music. Well, Def Rebel can go. 
So bad. So bad. I'm just loving that, all this. Uh, the chain is manufactured, so it didn't come from the fans, but the level of engagement from the fans is over, so anything chant or sing. Meanwhile, while we say this, though, let's let's just flip it to be fair to the other side. Do you think that people were really getting those heated boos the way they were? WWE's been crowd sweetening ever since the uh, pandemic. Yeah, Roman Reigns specifically. They 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 definitely up when people are booing. They're like, oh, there's a little boo. Amplify. The, I I can see it. Me and Sean, yo, go back and watch some 1980s wrestling. And I want you to see people. Here's my hands. Here's someone sitting on them in the crowd. And then it'll be like, give me Sean. Who was someone that they were trying to force? And you were like, no. No, like the um, red rooster, like baby face red rooster. Just cut it out. Nobody it would, it would literally take a crowd reaction from like Savage coming to the ring and then add Rooster's music and act like it was Rooster. Then when you click when you go back to Rooster in the ring, the crowd's moving, not saying anything. Yeah. And but you can hear cheers all the way through. Like, ah. yeah. They they had a track for it, man. No, so, James, you're right. Run DMC DX was amazing. Yeah, no, that was a good that was a good collab. Ruthless Aggression CD. That was the one. I think Snoop did like Austin's song or something on it. Method Man on Rock's theme. Yeah, those were good songs. Right. Listen, I'm not hating on Snoop. I'm not hating on some of these other people. S N Double O P D O Double G. Uh yes. Uh Quills gives a little hip hop history. Ludacris spit over that Walter track, the first in its uh semi-original on his word of mouth album into the intro track to Coming to America. You're listening to Ludacris for lyricism. In pro wrestling, you've got like two minutes to get to the ring. Facts. What are we doing here? So I, I think it could have been better presented. But like I said, I think Mercedes is going to be a great get. She's going to add more to the division. You see who main evented when there was three hours of the show, right? It was the women Yo, who main evented. Mercedes good... Monet is amazing. She just has crappy music. That's it. That's what I'm saying. To me, it's not that big of a deal, but other people are going to oh. make it. You get what? Oh, Conrad, I'm so surprised to hear you say that. The Undisputed Era's music was so big, it made it made people interested in Bobby Fish. It can make you, but what I'm saying is this is something that you could tweet. Something that could be so good for you could get changed like that. Like, I thought Ricochet's old music was great for him. Mm -hmm. It's gone now. Does that mean Ricochet's any less of a wrestler when he's in the ring? I believe no. it does. I don't think I don't think he's less of a wrestler in the ring. I think that it's a garbage presentation for him. What well, that reminds you of? I was giving you something for that one, man. What What was it? I I, I believe it does. That's <laughs> some Bob, that's some Bobby Heenan swag for you. Yeah, I I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else they could do to try to uh, prop this up. Like I said, I, all I can hope for with Mercedes is change the music and then boom, we're off to the races, right? No, no, absolutely. Well, how do you feel about this title change they did? Eddie Kingston drops one of his three belts to Kazuchika Okada. He is already a champion in AEW. He felt the the path of that young Rainmaker <laughs> got his head clotheslined off. The most overrated finish in professional wrestling. I'm going to say it again for the kids in the back. Okada, Rainmaker, the Mo Jake the Snake Roberts was doing the Rainmaker 30 years ago, bro. And it looked better. His was the short arm clothesline. The Rainmaker is one of the most overrated finishers. In so you're telling me a clothesline. What is this, 1975? Bradshaw did it. Bradshaw knocked people's head clean off their shoulders. Bradshaw ran from one rope to the other to the other again and closed line the person with 285 pounds worth of force. All right. Can I, may I combat that? Of course you can come back. So when did Bradshaw take the Olympic torch up for Japan? All right. I understand. What when you're was there a video game where Bradshaw was in it for Yakuza and Tekken? Does that make any difference about what I'm talking about with a clothesline? I don't care. Okada is legendary in Japan. I never they said I never said he wasn't. It. I think Okada's a top 10 athlete in the game today, but his finisher is trash. It's a clothesline. A standing clothesline. How do we get why, that far? Why am I the only person who speaks facts around here when it comes to stuff like this? You speak facts all the time. But why am I always sitting up here saying things that make sense and people... 
I'm, I'm glad who brought that up. Uh, Stan Larry Hempson and Emily Z. Stan Hempson threw his whole body into his lariat. Brad Trump threw his whole body into the clothesline from hell. Think, Conrad, take five seconds, stop being emotional like I usually am, and think about the Rainmaker. It's a ripcord lariat. Let me let me ask people okay. this. There okay. aren't there there aren't many moves that impress people today. I see Pro Wrestler Shoots agreeing with you. I'm not surprised you, by this. Yes. Yeah. I'm I, just I mean, saying. I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's an awesome finisher. I don't see it. I don't hate it. Is what I'm saying. I didn't say I hated it. I said it's overrated. Okay. Did you see the first one he hit on somebody in AEW when he uh, upon this heel turn? Say that one more time, bro. Did you see the first one he hit on someone upon the heel turn? Because I said the first time he delivers it on television, now that he's part of AEW, it has to be great. Uh, I'd be a liar if I told you I saw the very first one, though. No. Young, young man with the afro sold this like he got shot with a shotgun shell that knocked him backwards, bro. Okay. The dude gets hit with it, and he sold it like a G. Like I was like, that is the perfect way to sell the first one. And Okada's just laughing like, yeah, he's done. I, I don't. I don't know. I, I'm okay with it. Um, Here, here's the here's the problem I have with you, brother. I love you, man. You're my dog. But here's the problem I have with you. You take what I say and it doesn't register in your brain. I'm not saying, bro, that the Okada Rainmaker is a trash move. Okay, it's not a leg drop. Okay, I'm not saying that. I'm saying the Rainmaker. Just, just imagine the rain. Imagine the Macho Man flying elbow. Imagine all the way up to Daniel Bryan's crazy knee, all the way through uh, the Young Bucks tombstone thingy they do, all the way through Roman Reigns' spear. It's a short arm clothesline. But isn't it that that used to be Jake's signature? This is what I'm saying. How did it was not Jake's signature? Well, uh, no, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was Jake's signature, but it was followed by the DDT. Yeah, it was a signature move. It was a setup. Okay, move. great, cool. So, but 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 Okada's clothesline is his finisher. All right, let's let's compare for a second. Yeah, let's do it. Come on, man. Ray, Rainmaker yeah. versus Seth Rollins rip court knee. I didn't All like the I didn't like the rip court. Yeah, I didn't like the rip court knee either. I thought that was kind of lame as well. Do you not like the rip court aspect to where they have to grab your wrist, turn you around, and then I don't like any move that is a historically regular move. That has, t but with a minor moderation that turns into a finisher. Like to me, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I was just going to say, isn't it? To me, it's so tough today to come up with finishers. Like, what is someone's finish nowadays that you're like, okay, this is protected enough to where we can, where we can do that? Certainly you know not. I mean? Certainly not the super kick. But let me give you a let me give you a perfect example, right? Somebody who I'm really not feeling in the business right now, but I'm going to talk my talk right now. Both are clotheslines. All right, modern day AEW. Both are clotheslines. The Rainmaker or the Buckshot Lariat. This is not even a question, Conrad. This is not even hard, Conrad. No, well, I don't like to sell on the Buckshot usually. I mean, I guess it depends on who's taking it because you could make it look really good if you want to. I'll, I'll go Buckshot more so than that. If if you're asking me, like, which one do I think looks more devastating? Okay, let me ask you this. What's more devastating? Both very elementary moves. The Rainmaker or a clothesline from the top rope? Depends. This is where I go. I'm, I'm just, it depends I'm just on saying. Who's doing I'm just it. saying. No, but to me, that's, it depends on who's doing it. Okay. If you if you got if you got Big Kane who ran through Lowe's, I mean that's different than okay, cool. But if you're like, here comes Matt Seidel off the top, I'm like, yo, <laughs> Rainmaker. <laughs> There's a difference. You know what I'm saying? But you know what? I will say this to close this part of the conversation so we can move on. Big ups to Okada for making that clothesline into what it is today. Anything can be a finisher, I think, if you make it believable. But I think people just have, have a hard time when Ricochet does a 630. Come on, dog. What is this clothesline? So-and-so had – dude, 
people would rather have a sleeper as a finisher. Like, yeah, let me put a sleeper on. But, but if but, you got but, a but submission, the problem, but the problem, bro, with somebody like Ricochet, Ricochet can jump from the rafters, and and he's he's just not over. It doesn't matter. Yeah, that's why I, mean, that's why I want to give you credit and say you're right because at the end of the day, big ups to big up big ups to uh, Okada for making that respectfully elementary move into something legendary. I'm just saying, Brax tax rubber meets the road. It's a little bit overrated as a finisher. Do you hate Eddie Kicks and spinning back fist? We're, we're we're getting into finishers right now. Like, what, yeah, what? I don't hate his back fist. I think that takes a lot of ingenuity. I think it's special. I think it's theatrical. I think it's everything that a finisher should be. I like it because not a lot of people do it as well. Okada's okay. Rainmaker. You see people try to bust it out and do it too, and you're just like, nah, dog. You ain't let, let me it. let me give you another example, bro. Because I'm loving this conversation. Let's stay here for a second. Shawn Michaels. People say, yo, the super kick is just a regular move now. If you take Shawn Michaels 1997 and insert him into today's landscape, Sweet Chin Music is still better than most super kicks. And as much as I like Jay Uso, it's better than Jay Uso and Jimmy Uso super kick. It's better than 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 the Young Bucks super kick. It's because Shawn Michaels knows how to sell it. My question to you, Conrad, is is the rainmaker, the rainmaker that won him the Continental Championship last Wednesday, was that was that spectacular to you? No, but it, here's the thing. I wasn't expecting Eddie to sell it the way that th – this is why it depends on who's on the other end of the move sometimes too. Like, right, true. Okay, give me – if what if Kurt Henning was on the other end of it? I think you would view it a lot differently. Or right, Kurt Henning or, or, or somebody like somebody like Rick well, Ricochet can sell. Dolph Ziggler. Prime Kofi. They, yeah. It would look different if it's them, but Eddie Kingston ain't doing all them flips anymore. It's game over. You know what I mean? Eddie Kingston's a lot older now. He's here to get his bread and take his bumps and do what he's got to do. Yo, I got to get into this comment by, by James. Oh, my God. You're going to make me a rock apologist. Okay. The people's elbow. Chat, tell me if I'm right or if I'm wrong. Some people agree with me about the Rainmaker. Some people did not. Conrad, let's have some fun with this, okay? The people's elbow at its core is the stupidest move of all time. It wastes time. It's just an elbow. It's ridiculous. But you know what makes it awesome? The theatrics, the theatrics. As a matter of fact, in the video, in one of the video games, I think it was called Elbow with Theatrics. Best That's people, what makes it special. Best people's elbow of all time. Uh, I'm gonna say when he slid across the ground in church shoes. Yeah. That was it. Church shoes, people's <laughs> elbow, bro. Anyone who went to Catholic school, you know, with the penny loafers, you done did that running across the gym floor. Now my question, my question to you now, that because James brought it up, but I'm gonna I'm gonna run with you, bro. Check this out for Con Conrad. The people's elbow is 99% theatrics. The rainmaker is 99% physicality. Mm -hmm. What's more entertaining? Depends on what you like, I think. Because Ooh. remember, in New Japan, what is the purpose of New Japan Pro Wrestling? Okay, it's hard hitting action, chops. You're gonna feel it. You've been worn down. The rainmaker doesn't get hit in like the first two minutes in New Japan. You're gonna get worn down. He he didn't beat you down, and he might go for it a couple times. He might hit you with more than one. But when he catches you with it, it's game over because that's his move. Just brother, like brother, points. I've seen I've seen Okada. To your point, bro, I've seen Okada. My hand to God, hit a brain buster. The guy kicked out. Hit a superplex. The guy kicked out. Hit a move where he just pretty much just dumped somebody on his head. The guy kicked out. Did a move I can't even pronounce. The guy kicked out. Then he hits the Rainmaker and the match is over. What the heck is going on here? That doesn't make any sense. It's it's a different culture for what they're, what they're playing. Well, we're in America now, buddy. Not when you're watching the shows over there. So <laughs> my point is, 
<laughs> it's a different culture. Wrestling is taken very serious in Japan, unlike here. Like in Japan, it's in the newspapers. Like who right. won in the wrestling matches? It's not like that here. Everybody here, it's like the circus. Ha ha! It's so funny, and it wasn't always like that. Like when me and Sean grew up, it wasn't right. funny. Ha ha! It was like, oh, Hulk Hogan's the world champion. He beat Iron Sheik the other night, and right. blah blah blah. Right. Could you could you could have gotten into it like that? And I saw some people say like Hogan's leg drop was whack. That used to be a finish, bro. Yo, the body slam was a finish. I know we didn't grow up with that being a finish. Yeah, that was a little before our time. My yeah. dad was like, yeah, that used to be a finish. Like, you would really wrestle, then the guy would run, and then he was like, oh, I caught him. Boom, slam. That's the finish. One, two, three. Jake the Snake Roberts, he invented the DDT. Everybody does the DDT. We, we grew up in a time where the power slam was a finish. Yes. Yeah, it, and it's different. I thought when uh, FTR brought back the power and glory finisher, the suplex into the splash, that's a great finish. That's a great finish. People should use it. Conrad, um, you know better than anybody. I love Okada, but the Rainmaker overrated. That's hey, listen, we're gonna agree to disagree. I saw <laughs> someone saying Kerr Cur- Cur- came in saying capping. I don't know which part is capping. Yeah. Uh or when he stopped the Undertaker, yes, th- that was always that was a great good. one where Taker that would sit good. up, kick him down, then elbow him, or triple H or uh X Pac or someone would get it, and then he would come across and be like ka 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 with the chops and then hit him with the oh, elbow. Oh, so awesome, so awesome. The rock's one of the best trash talkers of all time. Period. You know. I, 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 the, the reason why I like what's going on, The Rock is, is starting to remind me of what I liked about him 20 years ago. It, 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 he took a while to get there, but, you know, I get it. Rock Bottom or Becky's version, the bookend oh. is similar. No, Rock Bottom's the best. Yeah. Rock know. Bottom's the best, and Booker T's version is second. Yeah. Um, you know, it would be hilarious if they had Damien, uh, the snake in the game. You could use Damien. That would be great. Church shoes. How about some Quake Burgers, Mike? <laughs> Church shoes. Oh people's goodness. elbow oh was uh, God level, but it's an overrated move. He actually tried to use it as a finisher. What do you mean? He pet Hogan with it. <laughs> we were just talking about that match. He pet Hogan with the people's elbow, not the rock bottom. And by the way, Hogan's leg drop. Don't get me to start defending Hogan, but Hogan's leg drop wasn't just a leg drop either. Hogan's leg drop was. Do you want the one, two, three? Uh huh. Huh? That's the Hogan leg drop. It wasn't just a leg drop. It's a leg drop with theatrics. Renegade says, what about chokeslam? Tons have been done. Um, I think it's a devalued move, but I th- I think people are too harsh on some of the big dudes sometimes nowadays. They they deserve a little bit. I think you have to work better. You can't go in the ring and be uh, uh, El Gigante. Like You can't go in there doing – or Great Kali. You can't go in there like that anymore. But Low-key, low-key dope chokeslam, Scott Hall. Great, great joke slam. Um, remember when the doomsday device was special? I remember when the doomsday device got weak. Doomsday device was dope when, when Animal used to flip the guy over his shoulders, but then he started falling back with the guy. Yeah, I think because people started coming. Whose neck got broke? Henry Godwin? Henry Godwin. Yeah, they had to stop doing that that way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who would legit kick out of a 300 plus pound man dropping all that weight on your head? Good point, Matt. Good point. Touche. Finger poke of doom. We're not talking about that. Let's get into the main event of the show. Yes. Adam Copeland and Christian Cage. Sean, I saw a lot of complaints about this match. Well, you have to explain that to me because I thought they did a great job. It was too WWE-esque. I saw a lot of like the old school AEW fans saying it a little bit. And they were like, it was very WWE-esque, the finish and everything. They well, did. Some, people gonna, some people are just going to complain regardless, bro. Absolutely. Absolutely. I I enjoyed the finish of it. I thought it was very smart. They did it very well. Uh, Edge had backup. It, it worked. Christian handcuffed in the corner. Roshan bows him a couple times, and then he goes to get Spike that bat or the uh, two by four with all the things mm-hmm. on it. The old abyss, I call it the Janus. Yeah, yeah I like he's that. about yeah, to yeah. hit him. And Christian's smart. I'm not getting hit with that. Yo, I quit, bro. Take the yeah. bow. It's not that serious to me. Yeah, I thought the match was well done. I thought it was awesome. I thought the whole typical, you know, Edge versus um, Christian Toronto thing was kind of played, but they made it work, man. That What a great show, top to bottom. And they that main event was legit. And how dope was it that it bled over into the, the, the live rampage? Let me ask you this. Sure. Is Edge and Christian the best brother, I'm using air quotes here, brother versus right, brother, brother right. Mm-hmm. or tag team rivalry that's ever been done? I don't count Brett and Owen. I'm talking legitimate tag teams now. Legit, yeah, because Owen and Brett were not legit. I, I feel you, bro. Um, 
Edge versus Christian. Well, it, wouldn't, it certainly wouldn't be Devon versus Bubba. It wouldn't be. I don't think you don't give the nod to Matt versus Jeff. You don't give. I don't the think nod. You, you can't give it to Sean and Marty. You can't give it to Sean and Marty because it didn't last very long. Um, there is one that I might put against it, but I think it's lower than it. But give I it to me, Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa. I love the beginning of their rivalry. I thought it was that so was well done. Dope, but like it was, but, it, but it's below this though. I think. I think you're right. Edge's rivalry with his former partner Christian and brother Christian, I think, was is the best. I agree. I agree, Matt. Or weren't weren't Hogan and Andre brothers? Until he wouldn't give it. All you had to do was ask for the shot, man. And I would give it to you. <laughs> I love it. There you go. That, that, that's how you know we're old school. But yeah. Right. Um uh, yeah, they, they they I think it's the best one. I really can't think of anything else that's been done better. Like Harlem Heat wasn't that great. The New Age Outlaws breaking up as a team wasn't great. Yeah, that wasn't X-Pac that great. and Road Dog. No. Miz and our truth, nah, not really. It just no. doesn't fit. Flair Batista, not really. You don't have it. You gotta, you gotta do this. And I, I like I said, I think they're well done. I think Christian is very underrated. I know a lot of people will always like bring up, well, Adam Copeland's the guy. He was the world champ. He was the, you know, the top heel in WWE. Christian Cage deserved that opportunity too, I think, but he never got the chance to get it. He could have been on SmackDown wrestling Batista, and then they could have gave him that, but. I would say I would say the way you measure this conversation. By the way, you're 100 percent right. Um, let me preface it by saying I agree with you completely. The way you preface this question is, wow, um, that was such a dad joke, Doug. <laughs> Doug, we hear you, Doug. But let's oh, wait, hold on. I gotta say it just for the audio listeners. Hogan has the record for sibling rivalry matches because he says brother. <laughs> That's good, brother. Everybody, bro- I like that. That's smooth though. That was good, Doug. I gotta give you credit for that. Um. But the way I, 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 I uh, identify best tag team brother breakups to turn into a rivalry, first of all, Edge and Christian, top 10, if not higher, tag team of all time, right? That's number one. And then Edge versus Christian as a rivalry, that's top 25, I would say. It's a great rivalry, bro. I mean, right? would you give it top 25 credentials? You're talking about of all time. Yeah, I mean it's a stretch. It may not make top twenty-five, but it's in the I need, ballpark. I need a I need a piece of paper. I'd have okay. to sit down and really right. think. But I'm just saying the point is it's in the conversation for a top twenty-five rapper of all time, and they're undoubtedly a top five, seven tag team of all time. And I still think that that's how they finish the story. I think they ride out together. Oh, they need to win the tag titles for sure. I, I when does it happen and how does it happen? I don't think they know yet, but I think it's it turning heel. Happen. Edge turning heel. It'll be time. But you know what? Let's see. I hope we get a good TNT championship run. Yeah. Here's what I'm going to say. Let me put a bow on this Dynamite stuff. Dynamite has been good. I don't know what it's going to take for people to watch. I don't know where these people all have went and how they're stuck at like their numbers. Talk your, yo, I want you to go, Conrad. Talk your talk, bro. I don't understand how you have not been watching AEW Dynamite. It's been very good. Yes, Maybe you're a little sour on Rampage. If you like Luchador stuff, Rampage has been it for you. CMLL involvement. Uh, Wheeler Yuta is still still injured. They just announced that Blackpool Combat Club is going to be there in a big four-on-four tag, and uh, Matt Seidel will be replacing him. Ignore that, though. It's going to be great. It'll be fun. Mm-hmm. Trust it. Uh, <laughs> it just doesn't make sense that he's going to be there. <laughs> we'll, let it, we'll rock with it. Team AEW. Yes, sir. Um, I think Collision's been fun. We have a tag team tournament going on. I really would like for them to establish tag teams. If I could get two wishes for AEW right now, maybe three. One, I need another video game from uh, whomever can make it, <laughs> someone different. Uh, two, I would love for them to sign the Motor City Machine Guns. And three, get Scott Demore and let him run Ring of Honor for you. Mm. And I think you'll bring in a lot of people from there. And it'll just be buy-in off of uh, relationships. Those are the things that I'd like I'm not, to see. I'm not, mad at, I'm not mad at anything you just said, bro. Motor City Machine Guns will definitely help because here's the thing. How many times can you give the belts to FTR and the Young Bucks at this point? Yeah, We're kind sure. of at a low point, um, and I want to see something different, I feel like. Um, it's cool that the infantry won. They're making moves, man. That's all I can say. Are there going to be people who are going to go back to WWE? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if Buddy Matthews goes back. I'm wondering if Alistair goes back. Go ahead. If they want to go back, go back. 
I, I can't really say anything. Um, do the what gra- you're going to do. Grass is not always greener. Well, or you might be in the same spot you were in when you left. Have fun. There you go. There you go. Look at Andrade. I know people are all like, but Andrade's back. What has he done in the last two months? Honestly. Yo, Conrad, to talk, funny. Conrad talk your talk, bro, because Andrade has been swimming in mediocrity since he got back. I don't know what they're doing with him, but are you happy? I thought Tony was using it better at the end there. Like, eh, okay. Come on, bro. Come Do on, you? bro. Listen, every, everybody's got their ways and how they want things to be portrayed. Uh, <laughs> here we go. I'm going to the chat for comments. Uh, don't forget, we're going to be giving away this code here. So, like I said, hashtag EPW Hub, two Bs. Put it in the chat. And uh, I'm going to have Sean probably pick a winner here. So make sure you guys are putting that in. Uh, Terrell says, let Scott Demore run AW Creative. Yes. Team NWA. <laughs> what up, Prince Rockstar? No way. Sean put a lot of effort into his kick. Sean's super kicks were always on so much of a point. You lose MJF, they are done. I don't think MJF's leaving, man. Like, I, I if they if he's gone, Tony Khan's a fool, and I will dog him. But at the same token, like, why? Well, I, I don't know. So, like you said, Sean, maybe maybe it's not better. Yeah. Um, going back to this, Sean hit sweet chin music he hit you right on the jaw. Moxley will go back to WWE. He's the one I don't know if he will. I think he actually hated it there. Well, they they disrespected him, and I don't think he'll forget that. Um, Renegade said, tournaments might as well make its own pay-per-view, Tony. I'm not a fan of the Japan traditions. Oh, by the way, I think AEW blew the whole tag title situation. I think they messed up. What What do you mean? They should have done where, where Darby kept the titles, and then Darby picked his partner. I don't think they needed to do a tournament for this. They had to at that point. He broke his foot too. So Oh, he was okay. My fault. He was out. Thank you for the insight. Yeah, that's no, it. no. A lot of people think it was for the mountain climbing, which that's he he was gonna leave for that anyway, but he broke his foot. He can't even oh, climb the mountain now. I think it was oh. a sign. I think it was a sign personally, like don't do that. But okay. Well, yeah, I mean, you're putting your life on the line trying to climb Everest. So yeah. Best friends and pride of powerful private party. Those would be some good tag champs. Andrade has a match tonight. Yeah, but What's he doing? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like I'm gonna get Punk's, Punk's interview segments, the main event of the show. Uh, let me see. McKinney said, "I think WWE is splitting the tag belts. Truth is gonna pull down the Raw belts, thinking he won the match, and then run off with the Street Profits grabbing the SmackDown titles." Bold prediction. Uh, Bold prediction. Like I hope you're right because they should split the tag titles. I don't think they should. I don't like the split. I think champions should just go back and forth and call it a day with this draft stuff. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. What what draft? Dominic was just on SmackDown. What are we doing? Like, what is this? That's all I say every time I want. Like, okay. Hashtag, you... hashtag what draft? Yeah, dude. I swear we should make a shirt, bro, with like blue and red. What draft? Like, there is no draft. I can get to work on that right away, bro. Don't play with me. <laughs> the second best uh people's elbows when Mick Foley and The Rock did it together. Oh, yeah, with the sock. All Triple H favorites going back to WWE. I have fun with it. Word was MJF shoulders are getting any better. He might need surgery that he'll be out longer. I yeah. love the Japanese tradition of the king of the ring, the, of the king of the ring. Uh, I thought nobody ever kicked out of the end of days. They did it for a long time. Uh, this sounds like a good idea, McKinney. You, you know, know what, what that means. means. <laughs> Which you can get your shirts on sale right yes, now. Yes, make sure you go to Threadless Hub Wrestling Weekly to get your You Know What That Means t-shirt. No draft during Mania season. Yeah, right. Tony gives us a G1, and people haven't stopped complaining. The tag tournament is even round robin. It's I, I don't hate tournaments. Like I said, to me, they're cool. I, I'm i cool with them. I mean, do they rely on them too much? Yes, but. I you know what I would love? I would love for Triple H, Aldis, or uh, or um, what's his name on Raw? Um, the general Pierce. manager, Pierce, to come out and say, we're shaking things up again. The crowd says, shaking what up? It's already shook. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody just shows up wherever they want. <laughs> Yo, crazy, crazy. Um, Sean, we got Raw coming up tonight. Let the fine folks know who has won this uh, Triller TV code. Well, we're really excited because Conrad and I were figuring this thing out, and we think that this guy deserves it for tonight. You all deserve it, but we can only have one winner. So big shout out to Connor. Connor, you are the winner of the 
contest this evening brought to you by Clash of the Podcast and Trailer TV. Congratulations, my guy. Connor, get at me to get the code, bro, uh, on whatever social media platform, at EPW Show, and everyone else, please feel free to follow me. We'll have more contests and stuff coming up. Um, this Wednesday, me and Derek, we're going to be doing Dynamite Review. Here's the card we got for it. Will Ospreay versus, you know, Shibata. No big deal. No big deal at all. You know, people <laughs> won't treat it like that. Just a, just a guy from Japan. You know, if, if that's how you view it and you don't, you know, care about it. Will best, Ospreay, Shibata. Best wrestler alive today. Konosuke Takeshka versus Swerve Strickland. When I tell you it's going to be good, it's going to be good. Trust me. It's I, f- I feel it in my bones. It's Swerve's time. I think Tony was going to wait a month, but I think he was like, no, nah, we got to do it now. I think he and, knows it's time. And by the way, Bucks versus Private Party is nothing to sneeze at. Oh, by the way, this is also a rematch. If you remember the first AEW Tag Team title tournament, do you remember who won that match? Purple Private Party! Yeah, man. Shocking win. Yep, pull up the upset. I loved it. Very well done. Um, Let's see here. Uh, And Lizzie says Cody Rhodes is kicking off Raw. Well, we don't want to hold up anybody. Don't forget, April 4th. April 4th. We're going to remind you again next week. Go over to Hubbard Wrestling Weekly. We are going to have the livest, like WrestleMania. This is your real WrestleMania kickoff. Be over there. It's going to be a lot of people. Sean Hubbard hosted everything, of course. A branch off of Clash of the Podcast. I'm going to be there. Conrad Conrad Cushman co-hosting. Crystal's going to be there. Crystal. Jesse's going to be there from the Pro Wrestler Shoot. Yes, sir. We've announced Joel. From Trilla TV is going to be in the building. Did I get everybody? Is there a surprise? Still? And there's going to be a surprise guest as well. Yes. I promise you, I do not know who the surprise is, and I want to not know who the surprise is. I actually offered to give Conrad the scoop, and he said, No, don't tell me. So I'm showing up. We're going to be there. We're going to be talking WrestleMania. We are going to be having fun. Come on in. Join us, guys. Have some fun. Subscribe to Hubbard Wrestle Weekly. It's in the description box below. Join the Discord server that's there. E. Putting it in the chat. I think it's hubs with a, a S. So make sure that you guys are in there. One more time. That's in the live chat. It's in the description box. Show us some love. Uh, Sean, take us out with your final words, brother. Appreciate you as always, Conrad. Appreciate the chat. WrestleMania season's in full swing. We got about seven minutes before Raw goes live. We want to make sure everybody's locked in front of the TV to make sure they enjoy. I have been watching weekly WWE television for the past four weeks. It's four weeks in a row. After about five months of boycotting WWE television. I reached out to Conrad and said, I'm back on the bandwagon for a little bit, and Conrad was very happy to hear that. So WrestleMania is in full swing season. WrestleMania season, that is, is in full swing for all of us. It's the most exciting time of the year in professional wrestling. Trilla TV has some crazy stuff going on. Conrad has double and triple duty coming up WrestleMania week. Hubbard Wrestling Weekly is live on April 4th. Everything's going on. I love it busy like this. This is what it's all about. So for myself and the one and only Conrad Cushman, Hubbard Wrestling Weekly, Everything Pro Wrestling, we are Clash of the Podcast. Be encouraged, be blessed, and always remember, evil never, ever prevails. We'll see you next week.